Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on colon cancer, also called as colon carcinoma. Colon cancer is defined as a cancer that occurs in the large intestine, which is the colon. It is common among Chinese and more common in males compared to females. The most common site of colon cancer is at the sigmoid colon, where it consists of 25% out of all the cases. And other possible sites are the rectum, cecum, rectal sigmoid junction, transverse colon, and ascending colon. So anyway, in the colon, it can occur. These are the characteristics that will increase one's risk of having colon cancer. So the risk factors can be divided into modifiable or non-modifiable risk factors. For modifiable risk factors, it includes the diet of the person, so those who like to eat canned food or processed meat and have always drink alcohol might have a higher risk of having colon cancer. Lifestyle such as smoking and obesity also increase the risk of colon cancer as well. Whereas the non-modifiable risk factors include older age, usually more than 50 years old, Chinese race, those who have a family history of colon cancer, hereditary syndromes such as the familial adenosis polyposis or other syndromes and if the person has a personal history, a past history of colon polyps diagnosed on investigation or any cancer or any history of inflammatory bowel disease. So what are the symptoms of colon cancer? So the patient most commonly presents with abdominal pain, which consists around 44% out of all the cases. They might have bleeding, such as hematochesia or melina. Hematochesia means there is per rectal and fresh bright red bleeding from the rectum. Whereas melina is when there is dark black stools, sticky stools. So there is blood in the stool. They may have symptomatic anemia, often presenting with chest pain in elderly patients. Any changes in the bowel habits, and these are some of the red flags, such as alternating constipation and diarrhea, spurious diarrhea, which can be secondary to obstruction of the intestine, and bacterial degradation, pencil thin stool, where there is diminished in the caliber of the stool, very thin stool instead of normal stool, and also tenesmus, which is a feeling of incomplete defecation, and sometimes it can be painful as well. So these are the red flags in altered bowel habits. They might also have symptoms of intestinal obstruction due to the tumour and also metastatic symptoms if the colon cancer has metastasized to other parts of the body. So if there is metastasis, metastasis to the liver, they may have discomfort in the upper right region of the abdomen or jaundice, which is yellowish discoloration of the skin. If mets to the bone, they may have bone pain or fractures on small impact. Lungs, they may have difficulty in breathing. And brain, they may present with some weakness of the limbs or headache or altered mental status. Also, there are some constitutional symptoms such as loss of weight, loss of appetite. So these are the symptoms that could indicate colon cancer. Next, we will look at the physical examination. So we have to check the vital signs, which include the temperature, blood pressure, pulse rate, respiratory rate, and also pen score of the patient. General appearance, we look for any signs of altered mental status. Are they alert and orientated to the time, place, and person? Signs of poor nutritional status, such as cachexia, where it's wasting of some muscles, such as the temporalis muscle. Signs of anemia, we check the palma pallor or conjunctival pallor, and also signs of jaundice, especially in the eyes or overall appearance, whether there is yellowish discoloration of the skin or not. So on abdominal examination, look for previous scars, check for incisional hernia if there is any scar, any organomegaly, such as enlarged liver, any tenderness or mass palpable or abdominal distension that could suggest an intestinal obstruction as a complication. Signs of intestinal obstruction, such as tinkling bowel sounds, heard on auscultation of the abdomen. And also look for limb node enlargement, especially the virtuose node and inguinal limb nodes. 
So we could also complete our examination by doing a digital rectal examination to feel for any mass present, any contact bleeding, and if there's any mass, the anal verge, and also feel the muscle tone and the mobility of the tumour. We can also do the respiratory and cardiovascular examination to look for any pleural infusion or any signs of anemia such as tachycardia. Also check for bony tenderness that could suggest mats to the bone. So this is for physical examination. Next for investigation. The investigation to establish the diagnosis of colon cancer include a colonoscopy and also if there is tumour then we biopsy, do biopsy of the tumour for histopathological examination. And others include double contrast barium and air enema or CT colonography. Whereas for staging investigation, it includes the CT scan of the thorax, abdomen and pelvis. This is for staging purpose. And bone scan can also be done if symptomatic to look for meds to the bone. Supportive investigations include blood investigations like full blood count, uh, renal profile, liver function test, erect and supine abdominal x-ray, and also erect chest x-ray if there is perforated tumour to look for air under diaphragm. The abdominal x-ray would be to look for any intestinal obstruction due to the tumour. Pre-op investigation include the casino embryonic antigen level, the CEA test, and also group cross match and coagulation profile. So this CEA is a useful prognostic and surveillance tumour marker in colorectal cancer. However, there might be some false positive raised in CEA because it can be associated with smoking, inflammatory states such as pancreatitis, diverticulitis or cholecystitis, and also it is raised in cancers in other areas as well besides colon cancer. However, CEA is a commonly used tumour marker to detect colon cancer. So for treatment, there are some pre-operative measures that we should do, which include lab investigations I've mentioned just now, bowel preparation where there is modification of the diet. So we ask the patient to take three days in low residue diet and one day clear fit, clear fluids and then don't eat anything from 12 a.m. midnight on the day of operation. Also, stomach site discussion with the specialist, prophylactic IV antibiotics within one hour of the skin incision and also DVT prophylaxis where we can give subcutaneous heparin or st stockings are fitted. The principle of the surgery for colon cancer, first we have to remove the cancer completely with clear margins which is a margin of 5 cm proximally and 5 cm distally would be adequate. Resect the adjacent draining lymph nodes, avoid disruption or spillage of tumor cells, and also after the surgery, reconstruction of the bowel. So these are the types of surgery for colon cancer. For small tumors, you can do local excision of the tumor. For larger tumor, there are two surgeries, two main surgeries, which are the anterior resection, plus minus Hartman's procedure, which is the formation of a temporary colostomy. Another surgery would be the APR, which is the abdominal perineal resection with a permanent colostomy. So I'll talk more on these two surgeries. For the anterior resection plus minus Hartman's procedure, it is suitable for any tumour in the upper two-thirds of the rectum. And it, is, it consists of two main procedures, which is anterior resection and Hartman's procedure. So anterior resection is an anterior approach to surgically resect the rectal sigmoid colon. So remove the rectal sigmoid, do a primary anastomosis between the descending colon and the rectum. Whereas Hartman's procedure, after resection of the colon, closure of the rectal stump, shown in this picture here. So this part is where the rectal sigmoid colon is excised and then there will be two ends. So closure of the rectal stump and then at the descending colon, we do a form, we form a temporary end colostomy. So the stoma is brought to the skin surface. So this is used when immediate anastomosis is not possible. 
and this procedure is spinter saving. It does not affect the, uh, affect the anal sphincter. Whereas for this APR, abdominal perineal resection, it sacrificed the anal sphincter. So this, is, this APR is indicated in rectal tumor at distal one third of the rectum. So this surgery will remove the anus, remove the rectum and part of the sigmoid colon and also the nearby limb nodes through an incision made in the abdomen and perineum. So it is a two step surgery. And just now, the anterior resection and Hartman's procedure, there will be a temporary end colostomy. However, for this APR, it will form a permanent end colostomy. So you can see in this picture here, this is the abdominal perineal resection. They remove the whole of the anus and the rectum and the sigmoid colon, part of the sigmoid colon. So other treatment include adjuvant chemotherapy, where the four Fox regimen consists of oxaliplatin, leucovorin, and also five fluorouracil. So this adjuvant therapy is to eradicate those micrometastases and reduce the risk of recurrence. For follow up, there are three parts of follow up. So we do history. We take the patient's history ask any symptoms, and do physical examination, and check the uh, CA level every 3 to 6 months for 5 years. Whereas colonoscopy is done in the first year, and then every 3 to 5 years. Whereas CT tap is done annually, which means every year for the first 3 years, to look out for recurrence. And that's all for this video. Thank you.